I recorded two podcasts on the same day because I don't feel good. Ah. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Lost My Ducks Season 3. How's everybody doing? Like, subscribe, notifications, fun stuff, all that. Yay, thumbs up. Let's do it. Leave your comments, questions down below. I love to hear from them. I love to hear from everybody, and I try to respond to everybody. And some comments I just like, because it's like, oh, you know, you sound great. Thanks. You know, like, that's awesome. I appreciate it. We just had a big discussion on Reddit about liking and commenting and the difference. And I think there's some stuff to that, but that's a whole other podcast. And we'll talk about that another day when I feel a bit better. Anyways, <sighs> gotta catch my breath. <laughs> I want to talk today about what it's actually like to become disabled. I know that's loaded. Hey, isn't that fun? Isn't that fun? <laughs> it's not fun. So for the life of me, I cannot understand the group of people who are seeking to find something wrong with them. Who want so badly to have something wrong with them. I don't get it as somebody who my whole life has avoided finding out if something was wrong with me until it like really, really, I couldn't avoid it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> like really couldn't avoid it anymore. Like, oh no, I'm screwed. So ever since I was little, I have not felt okay. Okay. I just haven't. I didn't know why. But I kind of avoided it. It was like, you, you try to avoid going down that road of, you're not okay. Unless you're one of those people. I am not one of those people. I am one of those people who is like, it'll be fine. You'll be fine. Don't worry about it. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Oh, did you just break your foot? Oh yeah, it's fine. I'm one of those people. I feel like that's avoidance times a thousand and three. Okay. I avoided not feeling good until I was in my late twenties. And I'm like, I really don't feel good. Like really don't feel good. And that's when I had the emphysema borderline scare, quit smoking that's when, like, just things were really starting to go downhill. They thought I had fibromyalgia for a while, and I went through... That's, like, a year and a half diagnosis. So I went through all of this stuff over about a year and a half, two years, to find out I didn't have fibromyalgia, and they had no idea what was wrong with me. And I'm like, oh, yay, good, awesome. I didn't have MS. I didn't have all of these things, and... I kind of just stopped going <laughs> because I was like, I don't want to have anything wrong with me. That's not how that works, by the way. So I avoided it at all possible costs and it was just getting worse. <laughs> it was just getting worse and worse and worse. And I've had a long time to think about this. And then in 2019, when I had the breakdown and I just had everything kind of hit me all at the same time, I realized I'm not okay at all. <laughs> I'm not okay. And that's okay. So five years ago, I was 34. Ew. Actually, I think I was 33 when everything happened. 33 or 34. It was five years ago. So five years ago, I had, it, it was like I got hit by a train. We'll get into that sometime. Anyways, I didn't get hit by a train. But everything went wrong. And then it was like I had, how many years would that have been? 30 years of just bullshit hit me all on the same day. But then, then, as I was like getting better mentally, so mentally, I'm doing pretty good. I'm very, very happy with myself mentally. Physically, shit started to fall apart. 
like literally started to fall apart. So when I finally saw the geneticist, they were like, it was like your illness is would have progressed anyways. Just instead of it happening over 10 years of progression, it happened to you over like a year <laughs> because of everything that happened. It just kind of like a lot of illnesses like MS, um, Parkinson's, EDS, they just kind of, you're sitting here, you're sitting here, you're sitting, whoa, then you're sitting here, you're sitting here, you're sitting here, whoa, and then you're sitting up here, up here. It just happens. Um, so you, you'll have like your normal and then you'll have a spike and your new normal can mean that more things are wrong and you just, you just kind of get used to it and it turns into your new normal and you're okay with that. But then you get another spike and then that turns into your new normal. So what happened to me was like, I was down here. I was like, da -da 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 -da, boom, like way up here. And then that's my new normal now. And when I broke my foot, when I broke my heel, it went up a little bit more. So now we're sitting at the new normal that's like up past the camera, which is fine. <laughs> so with that, I have become permanently disabled. I don't know how I feel about that. Do you know what I mean? It's not uh it's not something I'd wish on anybody. And I know that there's those people out there that are really seeking and really want something wrong with them. And that's not the case. So, I was speaking with a gal She's in an Instagram group with me and she had a horrific injury and stuff and is just trying to figure out why she can't recover from it. And part of the people trying to figure out what's wrong with them, there's a group that she falls into who's trying to figure out what's wrong with them because holy crap, right? But then there's a group of people who are like, oh, I have something wrong with me. And there's an example of this too. So with this woman, I have EDS. I have like either classic EDS or the one that starts with the A, where your hips dislocate, because my hips dislocate a lot. It's really fun. I don't like it at all. <laughs> Anyways, um, she was, she saw a specialist and had some stuff found out and they're going to look more into EDS because she could bend her thumb back and uh, something about her fingers. And I was, and I said to her, I was like, look, before you think you have this, please, please, please get it diagnosed by a geneticist or a rheumologist because it's, it's terrible. And just being able to do this and like that, I don't think that's, I, that's two on the Brighton scale. I got a eight to nine on the Brighton scale. Cause one of them I couldn't do anymore because I broke my knee. Normal normsies. <laughs> right? I broke my knee. I, partially tore my MCL, stretched two of my ligaments, and slid my kneecap. That kind of stuff does happen to people who do not have EDS. But if you have EDS, it's more prevalent to happen, and it's going to happen one day if you play sports. So I don't play sports anymore, which is fun. Anyways, there was a bunch of stuff. So she's one of the people who's trying to figure it out after a horrific injury, and trying to figure out why she can't get better. Then there's the people. I was talking to somebody on the phone. And they were like, oh, my physiotherapist said I have EDS. And that's as far as I'm going to go with it. Because now I have something wrong. Maybe you just needed physio for your injury. And then you heal from it. But you don't have anything wrong. Maybe you have a bit of hypermobility. But I said to her, you need to get that checked you need to get a proper diagnosis. And she doesn't want to because she has the thing wrong with her now. Say the difference. <laughs> so becoming disabled is the worst fucking thing that could ever happen to you. Uh, besides dying, you know, like it's, it's not the worst. I'm going to put it in the top 10. Okay. That was being dramatic. 
I was being dramatic. It's in the top 10. My old life, like what I used to have, is gone. And I miss it. I used to run. I would run a couple times a week, actually. I can't do that anymore. Because when I walk, I dislocate shit. I used to cycle. Can't do that anymore. Why can't you cycle anymore? It's not as high an impact. I have pots. That's why I can't cycle. <laughs> we figured out what was wrong with my blood pressure, and it's my blood pressure. It's my orthostatics, whatever the hell it is, my pots. It's the entire system of my veins and my blood pressure and the way I pump blood and all that other stuff. There's something wrong with it. And I'm like, oh, okay. There always has been. Ever since I had COVID in January, though, it's like a hundred times worse and I don't know why. Anyways, uh, that's another thing. So I can't run and I can't cycle. Okay, those are normal things that like people as they get older, sometimes they can't do anymore because of olderness. You know what I mean? You're just like, oh, my body can't can't cope with that anymore. And it's like, okay, normal. Normsies, fine, whatever. Your body can't cope with it anymore. That's totally cool. I get it. Do you know what else I can't do anymore? I can't really go for walks. And I know, like, with some of the stuff, it's like, oh, walking's so good. Not when your hips pop out. <laughs> do you know what? 10 out of 10, I don't recommend having your hip pop out. Because you know what hurts? Your hip popping out. Trust me. Or subluxing. It's only totally popped out twice. Oh my god. It subluxes all the time. Like both of them, actually. And it's really painful and I don't like it and it hurts for like two days after. And sometimes it keeps doing it. Like this thumb keeps subluxing and it's it, it hurts. It hurts. Or remember a couple months ago when I subluxed these two fingers and I had to have them taped to my hands so they would heal properly. That's fun. So being disabled sucks. And I try to figure out ways around it. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, okay, so let's do, let's do this thing and let's do that. Like for my handicap placard, I am self-declared now so I don't have to go to the doctor every five years for them to tell me I'm screwed up and need a handicap placard. My doctor filled out the forms that say, you just need this. You can go and get it yourself because you're never going to get better. That was the first kind of reality check of this whole situation. And I'm like, oh, okay. And right now I have bronchitis. I have had bronchitis for four weeks and you know what? It's not going away. That's another thing. It might just stay. It might just be here indefinitely. I don't know if it's going to get better or worse, but they told me as I got older that it would just be here. There would be a point eventually when I had it all year and then it's COPD. Yay! Now I just have it seasonally or chronically, so I have it come up a couple times a year, and I've had it for four weeks since it rained here in August. That's when I got it. I got, it got really cold, and then everything just went to shit. Also, the stuff around my mouth is from bronchitis. That's fun. <laughs> Being disabled is not a good time. And I don't know why there are so many people out there who wish this was what happened to them. It's difficult. It is hard to get assistance. It's difficult to get financial assistance because suddenly it's like, wham, bam, can't work anymore. And you're like, what the hell am I supposed to do? The province that I live in makes it absolutely impossible to try and get assistance. I've applied and I've been denied twice, even after a hearing, because possibly one day in the future, even though it's genetic, they might have a treatment. That's what I was told. My genetic conditions might one day in the future have a treatment. So they are not considered 
permanent. To tell you I cried. We don't have that technology. We cannot manipulate the genome in living things. As far as I know, I don't think we have that technology. I don't even think we have that technology in science fiction. I think in science fiction, like especially Star Trek and stuff, like Khan, aren't they the genetically manipulated people? And like Dr. Bashir in Deep Space Nine and like he had to hide it because it was so taboo. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we have that technology yet. Thank you, government. The federal government was like, sorry, you're so fucked up. Here's some money. And I'm like, oh, thanks, guys. And then I called them and I was like, oh, like, you know, they they found some other things wrong with me and I had to go through this diagnosis again. And like, am I supposed to call you and let you know? They're like, no. They're like, you only call us if it gets better, not if it gets worse. I'm like, oh, I'm like, do I get more money if it gets worse? And they said, no. <laughs> <laughs> so that's really, really, really difficult because I don't get a lot of money from the government and I rely on, I relied on savings I had, but now my family and Reno help me out and it's great that they do that. But like, you feel like a burden. You feel like such a pile of garbage some days and like, you don't want to. And it's because like able-bodied Josie would have been paying all of her bills and I would have probably purchased some sort of property by now and would have had way more money and wouldn't have been a disaster. But I also wouldn't have been talking to you guys about this and hopefully helping one person. If one person sees this and is like, shit, I can relate. And, but hey, she's on the internet talking about this and, you know, not quite a train wreck, but almost. <sighs> I guess that's why I do it. If there's one person out there who sees this out of my like a hundred views, if one of you guys sees this and you're like, I can relate. I'm like, okay, cool. I hope it helps. I hope it helps. I really do. Anyways, being disabled sucks. And I know there's all this stuff like out there of, the actual body positive movement about disabled people like having a voice and being okay with their bodies and I'm okay with my body I love my body but my god some days could you just work properly please <laughs> you know and then there's also a lot of stigma around like I don't look disabled wait until I walk <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So when I park in the handicap thing, I get like really dirty looks from older people. And then I like whip my cane out or like I fall over and they're like, oh, you know, we weren't glaring at you and saying mean things about you. Anyway, because that happens actually quite a bit. So I'm not okay. There's a lot of people out there like me who are not okay. And we're trying to be okay. If you guys knew what happened every day, maybe that would be a really good video. Not so much a podcast, but I'm going to do a video. I asked you guys what kind of stuff you want, if you wanted more day-to-day -day stuff, and you said yes. So we're going to do it. We're going to do a video of Josie's daily routine. And it's going to be terrible and I'm going to try not to make it a vlog because I'm really bad at vlogging, but I'm just going to explain to you guys what happens in a day. I think that would be very eye-opening for everybody. Anywho, being disabled sucks. But love yourself and know that you will get through it. It's okay. It really is okay. Okay? Okay. Anyway. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. It was a bit of a rant and a little bit of a ramble, but I apologize. Just leave some comments or ask some questions if you have any. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye!